this, some of this is going to go on um, both accounts, so I'm going to have to be careful how I word this. I want to talk about two types of herbs, relaxants and bitters. Both of these can be helpful. You have the relaxants. There is Viburnum opulus, that's crampbark or gelder rose. Another species is Viburnum prunifolium. This is a muscle relaxant and it also relaxes smooth muscle and skeletal muscle. So it will relax abdominal muscles for example and also the muscle musculature of your organs. It can be used for period pain where that's caused by cramping. In some jurisdictions it is illegal, in others it isn't and the way to take herbs in general is to do it with as in tincture form which is the most convenient. I took some this morning and I found that I could feel my abdominal muscles relaxing. I held it in my mouth which increases absorption and stops it from being broken down by the liver so quickly. I've been through that, I did that about an hour and a half ago. Another one is Californian poppy, Eschultzia californica. This is a garden plant, it has something in it which is similar to opium and it's a similar relaxant, although it's not as versatile as Viburnum opulus and Viburnum prunifolium. The next one is Lavandula angustifolia, also known as lavender. This you would use the essential oil for and you would not take it internally. The above three can be taken by mouth. This one <coughs> needs to be massaged on to the area that you want to relax. You could maybe put it in a bath. There are also a number of Schedule 3 herbs. These are herbs that are restricted and quite hazardous. <coughs> An example would be Hyascyamus niger. These are used, for example, in barium enemas. Then you have the bitters. Now there are quite a number of bitters. One of them, a very popular one, is Gentiana lutea, but this is endangered, so I don't use it. So we have Erythrea centaurium, centauri, and Matricaria chamomilla, chamomile, which has a number of other names. These bitters have a particular effect. If you hold them in your mouth, this is the tincture again, they will increase peristalsis in the stomach and further down. This will draw the contents of the stomach into the intestines, into the duodenum, and speed up gastric entry, uh, emptying. It does this via a reflex via the vagus nerve and the hypoglossal nerve. That concludes the herbal bit. There is a third category. The third category of medication for inflation is the kind of thing that will release gas when you swallow it. Now I have a plan, I have a plan to package calcium carbonate granules in a capsule made of alginate, which is the stuff that algae make algae sticky, it's agar agar for example. Um, <clears throat> what you would do with this is swallow it and then drink something which is high in citric acid, which could be a soft drink or something. It could also be carbonated. The capsule will dissolve, the calcium carbonate will then combine with the citric acid to produce calcium citrate and release, calcium, uh, and release carb carbon dioxide. It will also, if it's carbonated, it will act as nucleation sites like Diet Coke and Mentos, and this will also increase the volume. A hundred grams of calcium carbonate is equivalent to one mole of carbon dioxide, or one mole of calcium carbonate. It will produce one mole of carbon dioxide. That's 22.4 litres, which is a little bit more than the capacity of the body under normal pressure.